Hello and welcome to our coverage of a moment in history for the sport of mountain biking. The first ever standalone EWSE race from Valberg in France. Racing kicked off on Saturday with our first run through the stunning moonscape of the Terre Gris. Downhill part is on fire all the time. Need to move a lot of rollers and berms all the time. Pretty hard to gauge. It was super, super physical. I don't know. It sounds silly, but in practice, you didn't feel like you're above the motor that much. But that one, you're above the motor the whole time. It was uh, very fast. I, I love this kind of trail, but there is some uh, uh, some physical parts. And uh, finally, some uh, like like a flat section. Uh, you have to push hard. was good but after I stopped to time on the climb so I lose a lot of time but yeah it was a long day. Laura Charles was third. The series leader Alia Marcellini was second. And seeing as how we're in France it was two French riders riding for a French team who led the way after the opening two and a bit kilometers. Isabel Cordurier led the pro women's field by a huge 15 seconds from Alia Marcellini and Laura Charles. This one was absolutely incredible. It's like uh, riding in the middle of the grey earth and it's kind of a natural toboggan and you just can like enter super fast and really let the bike kind of uh, cruise. And so yeah, it's uh, honestly one of the most beautiful stage we've ever done. For tomorrow is uh, more long, more rider, uh, fast. It was Cordurier's teammate Adrian Day riding with a broken foot who came out on top by 4.4 seconds from Andrea Garibu and the series leader Edgar Carballo Gonzalez in the pro men's race. I'm just riding flat pedal because i broken a uh, toe. I'm not used to it but it's okay. And uh, I didn't expect to same uh, same time as the best. Come Sunday morning, it was a question of who could catch the flying French. This is the first time that e-bike enduro racing has stepped out of the shadow of the regular EWS and has the spotlight all to itself. And when you have an area as stunning as this particular corner of the south of France to yourself, you get to build a really, really brutal race course. There are a total of eight stages split between three loops, just shy of 60 kilometers of racing, 2,965 meters of climbing, and 3,675 vertical meters of descending. The first loop of Sunday was a big one. Five stages long, it included the uphill power stage, a brief visit back to the tech zone before finishing with the punishing Le Cray, one of the most technical and longest descents of the race. After the first four stages, the teams were nervously awaiting riders to arrive back at the pits. We don't have a lot of time because it's restart in the village after uh, 15 minutes. This means if he needs some help, eat, drink, uh, mechanicals, I hope nothing. Oh, just to set the pressure tires, because I think I lost a bit on the rear wheel and try to put the bike soft for the big stage. <laughs> it's been good, yeah, really hard. Um, but the tracks are so good here, like really technical and there's technical climbs in the middle of stages, which is good when you've got the help of the e-bike to get up there. 
yeah, it's lots of fun going around and exploring a big area. And it's also really physical because the bikes are heavier. And then the intensity is maybe slightly lower, but it's still really hard. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. The baked earth and loose gravel were proving to be tricky conditions, but some people were finding them more enjoyable than others. This reminds me a lot of Chilean summer, so it's nothing that I'm not used to. And so yeah, heat is okay for me. I struggle more in the rain. <laughs> This morning, first stage was um, not too bad. After I crashed three times on the second one, I pushed my bike on the power stage and I re-crashed on the stage four. <laughs> so it's an epic day, but I'm here. <laughs> Honestly, quite crazy because it's just ten and a half, and I already felt like I did a day of racing. <laughs> I did walk almost all the power stage, honestly, and I felt uh, like quite ridiculous doing it. But I guess it's uh, really something you need to train. You need to be used to the power of the engine. So it's definitely a discipline of its own. After stage four, Isabel Corderia had amassed a mighty 34-second lead ahead of Flo Espinera. Not to really relax on the bike here, you know, this morning. I was really safe on the bike to, because it's really loose compared to the practice. It's really dry and loose. Uh, just takes a good line, safer. And uh, finally, the, the, <laughs> the result actually not, not too bad. Good and check crash. Obviously, I crashed on my on my broken uh, toe, so I'm already tired and <laughs> and sore. So it'll be a long day. It was not bad. Like feel not really good, but like because there is a lot of uphill in the, the stages, so not my best part for me. But it's okay. In the pro men's race, it was Antoine Roche who led the way by just three tenths of a second. The ridgeline of Le Cray awaited. At 5.7 kilometres in length, it featured a drop of 520 vertical metres and some of the most technical riding that Valberg could muster before riders were rewarded with a rest for bodies and machines in nearby Guillaume. After loop one then, Laura Charles was sitting in third place, 59 seconds off the lead. Just ahead of Charles was Flo Espinera, growing into the race and now in second. Out front it was all Isabeau. Cordurier was scything through the stages a minute up the road from the chasing pair. Adrian Day had led when the racers left Valberg in the morning. By the time they hit the tech zone, he was third, but only 4.8 seconds off the pace. I'm trying to, to go fast, but I'm always uh, at track on my uh, broken foot. Alex Rudeau was consolidating a strong start and was now as high as second. But it was his compatriot, Antoine Roche, who was now in the lead, albeit by the slenderest of margins. Just six hundredths of a second separated him from Rudeau. After a battery swap, water and food, the racers headed back out to take on two more stages before the final showdown on Le Terre could Isabel Corderia keep her cool at the front and could anyone land a killer blow at the front of the pro men's race?
specialised Charlie Murray took his first EWS E stage win on stage six and would back it up with a second on seven. There was drama aplenty in the Pro Women's Field Series leader Alia Marcellini was out. She didn't make the start of stage six due to illness. Harder, harder. Today I'm, uh, I'm really, really tired. I uh, don't feel really good. But even more dramatic was the fact that Isabel Cordurier too would soon retire. The 2019 EWS champ crashed out, injured her foot and was out of the race. Laura Charles inherited the lead and now found herself 20 seconds to the good ahead of Flo Espanera with just one stage left. On stage 7, Antoine Rose suffered a heartbreaking mechanical. He finished the stage down in 19th after a puncture. Alex Rudeau, however, won the stage. His lead was now 22 seconds with only one stage left to play for. It would all be decided on Le Terre Gris. Espanera won on the final stage of the day through the stunning grey earth, but the wait for her first EWS E win would have to wait. Just three tenths of a second behind her on the stage was the race winner, Laura Charles. Charles took the win by 19 and a half seconds from the Chilean. Laura Charles took her second win of the year ahead of Flo Espanera. Adrian Day's bid for victory had faltered with a mechanical on stage 7, but he had won on Le Terre Gris the previous evening and promptly decided to do it again. It came at just the right time too. Day's pace had been sensational all week and that final stage win would be enough to secure him second on the podium ahead of Antoine Rouge. There was to be no catching Alex Rudeau. The Commonsal Enduro Project racer took his very first EWSE victory in some style to the delight of the home fans. Uh, really good. Uh, not a good beginning on the two first stage. After uh, I really confident on the bike and the other long stage was better and better. So win uh, here, it was not uh, the goal, but uh, I take it. <laughs> In the pro men's, there is that debut victory for Rudeau, Day second and Rouge third. Yannick Pontal was fourth and the first non-Frenchman was Charlie Murray in fifth. A hectic day's racing across the south of France then leaves the championship standings looking like this. She may still be waiting to open her win account, but Flo Espanera now leads the way in the pro women's field from Laura Charles and Alia Marcellini. And in the pro men's, Yannick Pontal has the leader's plate. Edgar Carballo Gonzalez is second and Andrea Garibo is third. Espanera and Carballo Gonzalez's superb form this season ensures the Orbea Fox Enduro team lead the way in the team's championship just ahead of Miranda Factory team with Lapierre Revolt in third. <laughs>